Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's talk about that final lactose fermenting enteric bacteria, which is Klebsiella. Remember, Klebsiella, once again, is a gram negative rod. Most of the time, Klebsiella presents itself in patients who are diabetics or alcoholics, um, specifically alcoholics if you think they uh, become drunk and they will vomit and they can actually aspirate some of that GI content into their lungs so the intestinal floor gets up into the lungs causing a lobular pneumonia in those type of patients uh, where they aspirate that gastric contents there. With Klebsiella, it is a very mucoid colony that we see with abundant polysaccharide capsules. Uh, one of the most common things that you're going to see associated with Klebsiella is a dark red or current jelly sputum. Uh, this, to me, is a good buzzword for Klebsiella because you only see a current jelly sputum associated with Klebsiella. If you don't know what current jelly is, this is a good picture of a current jelly. Uh, it's just that really dark red, almost bloody... Um, color to the sputum. It's not blood. That's something that's important to distinguish here. This is not blood in the sputum. This is just the Klebsiella causing the, the sputum to turn that dark red color. Klebsiella is a very common cause of nosocomial UTIs or UTIs that are found in the hospital setting and it is associated with multi-drug resistance uh, occurring. So let's talk about the ABCDEs of Klebsiella. So another good mnemonic here to help you remember A, B, C, D, E with Klebsiella. So A is your aspiration pneumonia. B is the abscesses in the lungs and the liver. C, we talked about that current jelly sputum. D, often seen in diabetics, all of this can be associated with that aspiration pneumonia. And then E is ethanol abuse, which we talked about, all goes together up with the aspiration pneumonia. Let's continue on and discuss Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter jejuni is a gram-negative organism, and it's actually got a comma or an S shape to it with polar flagella. And you can see here in this scanning electron microscopic view that kind of the curly Q look here to the Campylobacter jejuni. There are polar flagella uh, associated with it, which you can't really see, but they will be coming off of the ends here. Campylobacter is oxidase positive and it grows around the 42 degrees Celsius range. So it likes a really warm environment. Remember our body temperatures around the 37 degrees Celsius range. So we're talking about a higher temperature than our normal body temperature. So it likes that hot campfire temperature. It is the major cause of bloody diarrhea, especially in our children. And its transmission is by a fecal oral route. So person-to-person -person contact or ingestion of contaminated products like poultry, meat that are all undercooked, or unpasteurized milk. So if we uh, heat up that milk and we pasteurize it, that will help kill off the Campylobacter jejuni that could be present there. However, if it's unpasteurized, that's how it can be transmitted. You can also have a transmission from contact with an infected animal. So it's not just through a fecal oral route if there is a potential contact with the animal that does maybe have the fecal contents present on the skin and then it gets into uh, your body. It is associated with a uh, potential onset of Guillain-Barre syndrome as well as reactive arthritis. So that is another important thing to note of what you could see in a clinical presentation with Campylobacter jejuni. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.